you are on. All right. Okay. So now we're we're working, and um, in order to be consistent, I'm actually using properly screenless. Um, Okay, so this is a, I realize this is a weird idea. It's not, and um, I guess as, as a way of explaining it, I'm not calling this a proper software project because then I think people would start to judge it in a way that I find to be more of a problem. The idea is that this is actually, um, I'm calling it, and I know for some people maybe this sounds a little pretentious, but I'm calling it an artistic operating system. So it's a sort of experiment, an artistic experiment towards creating a different way of dealing with media in, in everyday life that doesn't involve a screen. And um, when I say screen, what I mean by that is a raster-based display, usually light emitting. So if there's any sort of dispute, that's my pedantic definition. Um, so this is just a sort of, I don't know, I like this image. It's um, a woman who's, uh, I believe, calculating the United States Census from 1940, and she's using a card punch to enter data which would then be, this is sort of proto-digital or pre-digital, uh, or I guess it's actually digital, but it's not, a, it wouldn't be fed into a computer, it was just a, some kind of adding machine, which would then calculate, I don't know, how many people live in Sheboygan, or something like that. Um, so that's, basically, you could see this as a set of experiments that I'm working on, as a sort of hybrid, it's not, purely paper, but it's also, it's got some digital components, but there's no screen. Okay, so um, maybe I should explain the, the rationale here. So sort of, what's wrong with screens? I mean, there's nothing really wrong with screens. The screens are, are great. Um, they're, and, and the more experiments I do, the more I find that there's a few very specific functions that are almost impossible to do without a screen. But I'm going to try anyway. So, um, you know, screens, I think most people would agree that they're, they're starting to dominate space. And there's also a problem with screens in that the way they work is they, they define a frame. You have a sort of window, like, uh, view of the world in that there's the thing inside the, the, the frame of the screen and then there's everything else that's outside and they're separated by this pane of glass and so you could see this as um, something that's useful because that's a sort of a different world as a separation but it's also problematic in that if you're looking at this thing 8, 10, 12 hours a day that means that you're essentially shutting out the rest of your existence in a way and it's this sort of um, I think it's a little bit problematic, and I think uh, the screen also has a tendency, it's very seductive. I mean, when you think of, if we use this m window metaphor, we can look here and there's this thing here that's a reference to a stained glass window in a church, and the, the whole, the, the stained glass window, at least maybe now it's not quite as exciting to people, but in the Middle Ages this was very exciting because it was uh, essentially something a form of media that was meant to be uh, a portal to the, the heavens, to God, to the astral plane. And, um, you know, it, 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 the way this light coming through this glass, and it's sort of mind-blowing. Okay, I'm speeding up here. Okay, the, uh, this quickly then, why new media sucks in 14? Uh, this is just a screenshot of uh, YouTube. So there's a video here. We've got some advertising we have to watch first before we can see the thing. Now we've got some sort of high scores and gamified stats and competitive stuff to encourage people to contribute more content. Now you have 200 pages of trolls and clowns and rambling and you've got um, here, some clickbait to encourage you. You haven't even watched the video yet, and you're supposed to be looking at uh, the next thing that you're going to watch after that. And in the end, this is an interface that has been informed by money. And you can see, because the, the thing you really wanted to look at, the one little image, was 
here and you know if you're like me I've got a small laptop so now we've got 15% of the whole screen is what I'm actually interested in and I have to work really hard to not think about all of this other crap that's around it. So in a way I'm trying to push towards maybe the idea that as designers and programmers we could make interfaces that are less crappy in a way. Um, and this is very like uh, I'm, I'm still sounding like a grumpy old man, but bear with me. I'll get to the point that's a little bit more optimistic. All right. So here's the other. Here's another example. This is uh, a, a tracing I made of the. Um, this is a an arm. Uh, dual core M3 CPU um, and this is the what the chip looks like inside and if you see these we think about oh it's dual core so that must be where the real exciting horsepower stuff is those two cores are just these two little blocks here and then down here we have USB almost everything else is related to graphics and it's, it's just funny, it makes me realize that so much of our effort, if you're writing software these days, a huge amount of the effort you're putting into writing software, even if your software is something that's not graphical, is about managing graphics. So it's about UI, it's about video decoding, it's about all of this sort of stuff. And it's, for me, a sort of an interesting thought experiment to think, what if we went back to, say, the late 90s, and instead of making fancier and fancier UIs, we just made stuff that was screenless or more screenless. Um, okay, so I think as an artist and as a programmer, this, this um, and this is where I'm, I'm trying to not, I'm trying to tone down the grumpy old man thing and actually turn it into something positive. So I think it's a possibility to take this sort of negative uh, complaint thing and realize that behind every angry curmudgeon there's actually a, a sort of starry-eyed utopian. And that I think that's where you can start to then take this negative complaint and turn it into something that's maybe interesting. So. Um, and, and this is where we can make something that's maybe a, a critical alternative to the status quo. Okay, so really quickly, some architecture stuff for those who are interested. We have this sort of office manager which gets these events. And since I'm at this point mostly still working with paper, these are usually barcodes. Those then generate messages and then send them to the different um, bureaus, I'm calling them. And those then will print something out using LaTeX, or it'll play some music, or spit out some jokes on Twitter. Here's some quick examples. Uh, here we go. This is my news, my my sort of daily newspaper thing. Uh, that one's coming along. It more or less works in a way that I kind of like. Here's some. I bought an old uh, receipt printer. <coughs> And I can print out tweets when I'm desperate for some sort of novelty, some funny asinine comments that somebody just made. Um, those are some tweets. And then, um, so I guess now I need to wrap it up. So here's an image that I really like. This is uh, Grace Hopper. If you know, she's sort of like, if you don't know who she is, she kind of invented the first programming languages, or at least was very involved with that. And this image is kind of interesting to me, because at least usually when I think of computing culture, I tend to think of, and no offense to any of the other white guys in this room, I tend to think of privileged white males. And I think that that's maybe what I'm going towards is this idea of technologies of difference. So instead of having one interface, which is meant to be the one and true universal interface, which is seamless and perfect, we could work on pushing an idea that's about difference and recognizing that everyone has a right to sort of determine how they want to deal with technology and they shouldn't be forced to use 
the one true apple or whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay.